So there is a debate on the internet that is as old as time, it seems. And that is, do you need an oil catch can on your car? Well, I don't know if you necessarily need one, but in my experience, it's always been beneficial to have one. So we're gonna install one today on the Ram TRX. All right, guys, so like I said there in the beginning, we're having a little bit of a debate. The internet is pretty much split 50-50 from what I've seen. Some people think you need a catch can. Some people say you absolutely do not. In my experience, every time I've put a catch can on any one of my cars, it always catches a good bit of oil that would have otherwise made its way into the intake valves and gummed things up. So with this truck being as expensive as it is, I want to make sure it lasts for as long as possible. The only car I've ever owned that I don't have an oil catch can on is this one right here and this one will be getting one very shortly after the ram trx does because i'm going to be using the same one so for those of you wondering which one i'm going to be using on the trx i actually got a mighty mouse can we're going to go over the install procedure i'm going to go over my thoughts and impressions on the build quality and all that stuff and mighty mouse sure enough they make a setup for the corvette zr1 as well so i'll be doing it on that car as well i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a backstory here because every car i've ever owned has had an oil catch can on it like i said in the beginning most recently my 2020 c8 corvette had an oil catch can and gm themselves have come out and said you don't need an oil catch can on this car it has some sort of special way of handling oil vapors that makes it so it doesn't end up gumming up the intake valves or anything like that so with all of that said i actually reached out to a company and they sent me an oil catch can i installed it on the car and i had it on there for around 1500 miles and i caught a lot of oil so between oil and during the colder months, I caught some condensation. In my opinion, it's one of those things that worst case scenario, it, it doesn't do anything, but best case scenario, it catches this oil and it helps save your engine. I'll actually insert a clip here because I videoed it and took record of it for YouTube purposes because it is definitely functioning and it is definitely doing something. So I feel like for the, the TRX and in the future, my ZR1, it's gonna do the same thing. Now, it's not necessarily gonna make or break your engine. It's not gonna necessarily make it not explode, but at the same time, with these high horsepower engines, it can start to rob power from these high output engines over time if these intake valves are getting gummed up. So I don't want that to happen. Obviously a little bit obsessed with horsepower. I want the horsepower at its absolute peak all the time. So this is an easy way to do it. With all of that said, guys, here is the Mighty Mouse can. One of the coolest things that I have seen in a long time <laughs> is this bracket right here. So this bracket is literally made just to hold the catch can in the engine bay. And yet look at the time and absolute dedication and detail that goes into this. All it is is a bracket and yet it looks freaking awesome. So this is going to be holding the catch can in the engine bay. Like I said, I may end up powder coating this or painting it black, but honestly, I don't really want it to disappear in the engine bay. So I may leave it silver. We'll see what happens. But the meat and potatoes of the install here, of course, is going to be the catch can itself. Very, very quality, high quality. I can tell already it feels sturdy in the hand. It's all aluminum. And of course we have the one-way breather valve on the top which will just vent pressure if there is excess pressure in the crankcase it will vent it out but it has a check valve in there so it cannot suck in any kind of unmetered air again very very awesome engineering here and of course mighty mouse seems to have it locked down when it comes to quality catch cans now the rest of this is going to be a lot of push fittings these are very oem style fittings right there uh, your rubber hose that will be cut to fit um, some angled aluminum connections there high quality again and then of course the bracket to hold the catch can to this particular bracket and then the obligatory sticker but anyway we're going to go ahead and get this thing installed for those of you who are wondering how the installation goes on the ram trx you're about to find out so we're going to pop the hood and we're going to get this install started so coming over to the truck guys the first step is going to be to remove these two screws here because the bracket with the t-rex head on it is going to actually install right behind these two screw heads right here and right there and then that is going to hold the can on the opposite side right here while we work on the PCV valve system, which is right there to there. So first step, let's go ahead and remove these. These are a T30 Torx head screw, and there is a rubber little grommet thing here on the screw protruding through. So make sure you take those off first. And here it is just loosely. 
placed into where it's gonna go. So this is the position it will sit in. Once those are tightened up, it'll be like that. After the bolts are all tightened up, like I said, T30 bolts in the back, the little rubber screw covers are not going to go back on here because there's not enough actual thread showing anymore. The biggest reason they were there is to stop it from rubbing against the engine cover, but there's enough uh, tolerance here now that you don't really need them anyway. So like I said, for a bracket, I, I, I feel like we have to take a moment to really absorb how awesome that is and how much work went into that all to just hold an oil catch can. I, I absolutely love it. Mighty Mouse is knocking it out of the freaking park with this stuff. Their catch can works in a way that's awesome and they don't allow you to even think for a second that it's not gonna be awesome just because of how freaking awesome that bracket is. So next, the instructions are saying to go ahead and start connecting some of the aluminum hose fittings here and getting them set up in a way that the catch can is gonna look like that once it's installed. So you can see this one goes to, looks like the front of the engine PCV while this one goes to the actual manifold PCV attachment. So it's not really too difficult. Ultimately, what, what's ended up happening here is instead of just one tube connecting the two together, we're separating it and running it through this catch can first. I'm really impressed with the quality of the fittings and the, the catch can in general. So I think this is gonna go very nicely. We got the fittings on, basically ready to go. The can is gonna be mounted in there just like that alongside that bracket. So those fittings are ready to go. Once we get the PCV valve off, we'll go ahead and cut the hose in here to size and then get them slipped on the ends here. I've already heard that you're gonna need a little bit of oil on the inside of that hose to allow it to slip over the barbs here without some serious fighting action. So we're gonna spray just a dab of WD-40 on there to allow it to slide over that. but. We'll show you that once we get to that step. Let's go ahead and remove the stock PCV stuff, and then we'll come back to this. The most important part of this whole thing is knowing exactly where the PCV stuff is at. So I'm gonna to try to get you a good shot here. You can see the white connector right there is one end of it, and then it routes over to the intake manifold right behind that foil wrapped hose right there. So we're gonna be installing right in between those two points. So you can see the manifold side PCV right here. There's actually a little clip right here. You gotta slide towards the driver's side. So just like this, you'll see how easy it is. Slide it over and then just lift it right up. So that right here, you just need to slide that over and then it will pop right up and off. Now the other one is a white one and it is the one that's connected to the supercharger end. You can actually see it right there. This one is a little different. There's actually a little button here you can push and then just slide it off just like that. So the button is right there. Now you can actually look inside there and already see a little bit of oil, which is great because my truck only has a thousand miles on it and it's already gotten some oil in there. So just another reason why we know the catch can is most likely needed. Once we're installing the aftermarket catch can here with the hose, you're gonna to wanna to use these style fittings to connect back on top of the valve cover. This one goes on the valve cover, the 90 degree angle one. And then this one will go to the intake manifold underneath the supercharger. The way that this is all gonna be set up is this one will connect to the 90 degree here, while the 90 degree here will connect to the 45 degree right there. Now what we have to do is actually measure out that hose and cut it appropriately. And I just have this mocked up for now. None of these bolts are tightened down, but I just wanted to see where this is gonna sit so I can kind of measure out how much hose each connection here is gonna need. So the first connection is just like that. I use a little bit of oil at the end to slide it on there. That thing is definitely not coming off. So it's gonna be a quick connect right onto the valve cover. And then the opposite end right there will go to the back side of the oil catch can right here. Whereas this one will go to the front, which is right underneath the supercharger. It is the intake manifold. So let's go ahead and get this one pushed on first. You can see the PCV right there. We'll just go ahead and slide this one right down on it. And it should clip into place, just like that. And then we'll route the other end over to the catch can here. The second one is gonna be on this metal tube right there. I've already got it set up. So we just need to basically push it on and like I said, they just slide and click just like that. So that one is good to go now. So we will route them all over here to the catch can. You can see I got the one already done, which I believe is the output. And then this one here is where it pulls 
the actual oil vapor from. Just like that, we should be good. All of the tubing underneath there is not touching anything or specifically the accessory belt. We don't want anything rubbing. Yeah, we're all good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and button this all up, tighten up the fittings, tighten up these bolts here, and then I'm gonna come back and check with this tomorrow whenever it's daylight, because we quickly ran out of light here in PA. All right, guys, so it is the next day. Like I said, last night we kind of ran out of time. The daylight faded a lot quicker than I was hoping, but we got pretty much everything all buttoned up last night. So it is pretty much ready to go here. We're gonna go ahead and give it the first startup just to make sure that there's no leaks. But as you can see, the bracket, it's all solid, it's all in place. And I really, really, really like the way that this mounts. So you can see the connections down under here. Now, the one thing I noticed on Mighty Mouse's website it didn't really show a real solid area of connection. So I wanted to kind of make this a little bit clearer for everybody who wants to do this, where these hoses actually go and which one does what. So basically you can see the one from the front here, which will come with a red cap on it. This one has a, what appears to be about a 90 degree bend. And then that one runs to the PCV right underneath the supercharger, which is right there. You can see it with the little green push clip on it. That one runs to the front of the can. The one on the side here has more of a 120 or so degree bend. And then that one runs to the top of the actual valve cover, which is right there. And that's pretty much that. So that's it. That's all there is to it. So other than cutting the hose to fit and getting these hoses on these stock barbs, we're kind of was kind of tough even with the oil you're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting these on there other than that the install is pretty simple so the bracket is just these two bolts up here then these two bolts holding the part here that holds the can and then after that you just pop the filter on here it's literally just a push fit it slips down over top of a little rib to hold it nice and tight this is going to vent any kind of excess crank pressure so again we're good to go now here is your visible sight so once this thing gets you know, visibly full of oil. You want to keep it somewhere around here from what the instructions say. You don't want it to get to the top of this because then it could potentially start sucking oil back through. But basically you'll see it here. Once you see it at the bottom of this little site here, you're just going to drain it, which is that gold plug right there. You'll just turn it and you'll be able to drain it right out. Now, this same setup from Mighty Mouse for a charger or a challenger comes with a little tube here that you can redirect down underneath the car. The one for the TRX does not come with that because as you can see here, there is more than enough room in here for me to put something underneath here to catch the oil. The install is super easy. I really just wanted to take the minute to show you guys where everything connects and I feel like that is done. So we're good. This video is over, guys. If you liked what you saw, please smash that thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking the content so I can keep creating the TRX stuff for you guys. I'm loving the truck. I'm loving the process. I'm loving the mods. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. You're not going to want to miss what's coming, guys. And as always, I will catch you in the next upload.